features a really secure latch on the top, which is actually a bit difficult to get in there and snap it open. But that's probably a good thing because there's less chance it's going to accidentally pop open on you. The camera itself is very small and light weighing in at just 66 grams with the battery and memory card installed. The wide angle fixed focus lens covers an extremely wide 170 degree field of view. The camera has three main operational buttons. The little one on the front here is the power button and is also used to cycle through menus. On the top is of course a shutter release that's also helpful with cycling through the menus. And on the bottom side here is a little button that's used for Wi-Fi connection. On the opposite end of the camera we'll find slots, a slot on the top for your micro SD memory card and two ports below it. One is a USB port for charging or uploading data to a computer and an HDMI port so you can play your images directly onto a monitor. There's a couple view screens on the front. There's this small colored view screen. Uh, which shows uh, you know data like your uh, resolution setting whether you're in video or photo mode and on the back is a two inch monitor uh, very sharp very clear for monitoring your images on this screen you can scroll through the easy to read menu and select various options including video and photo resolution time and date stamp exposure settings time lapse frequency language, sound indicators, you can flip the image upside down, you can adjust the power saving settings, and of course, format the SD card. The R stands for remote. This option is only a few dollars more, but it gives you a simple remote for triggering photos or video. The nice thing with this remote is you don't have to change the settings on the camera. You can switch from stills to video, depending on what button you press. It features a big, easy to see button and an LED indicator. But the real reason I got this camera was for its 1080 HD capabilities. You can set it for 1080 at 30 frames, which is the standard for high definition, but you can also set it to record at 1080 at 60 frames per second. The higher frame rate is great for shooting fast action, and it gives you the flexibility of creating some impressive slow motion effects when you're editing your video. For still images, you can set the camera to record 4, 5, 8, or 12 megapixel images. There is a burst mode that takes three pictures in a row. You can take pictures using a self-timer, and you can create amazing time-lapse videos with adjustments for recording a single frame every two, three, 5, 10, 20, 30, or 60 seconds. So there's a lot of flexibility built into the time lapse option. And one thing I'm really happy to see on a camera like this is the inclusion of an exposure compensation setting. This is really useful and allows you to brighten or darken your image. You can go from plus two f stops down to minus two f stops in one third stop increments. That's a really nice feature to have. Connected to your camera, you can then monitor your image on your smartphone or your device. You can go in and you can change the resolution from 108030 to 108060. You can flip the image upside down. And there's a feature built in here that's not even found on the camera, and that's an automatic white balance setting where you can go in and customize the color setting of the camera itself. You can also use your phone or tablet as a viewing device. You can view all your still images as thumbnails and all your video clips as well. You can play these in full screen if you want. The other nice thing is you can take all the images on the micro SD card and transmit them and store them on your phone, which is a great way to back up all your files. So enough with all the technical jargon. You're probably wondering, how do the images look? Well, in one word, excellent. Here